Famous? Famous. Famous? Famous. 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 Hmm. Can you repeat the word? Famous. Famous. I still think it's T H A M O U S. Uh, yeah. You lose! <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's start this thing! It is Tuesday night, and we are live, everybody, in Austin, Texas, for Night Attack! Bringing you the best of the worst of the internet ever tense, ever tense. I'm very tense. Every tense. Yeah, yeah, future, past, past, and present. present. Future, hello, beautiful people. I'm Brian Brush with Live in Austin, Texas. Joined live in Austin, Texas by my BFF from AUS. It's JRY. What's going on, Justin? Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Brian. We, had, said, a, we had a hell of a show. They said it couldn't be Rarely done. Rarely do we, well, we don't have guests anymore. Because we, no, we, we only have friends. We only we have only, guests. Yeah, we don't who have we know guests. We're friends with. We have friends, and joining us is probably one of uh, I think the most anticipated guests we've had on here in a very long time, <laughs> dude. Ladies and mildly. gentlemen, for No Agenda Show, it is Adam Curry. Adam everybody, Curry! dicks out for Harambe. Yeah! <laughs> dicks at night. Been waiting for. Three fucking hours to say that. Uh, yeah, oh, dude, that's good. Dick's that's good. Right. Harambe. Oh, speaking yeah. of which, should we just jump? Uh, so you saw our bet about whether or not we had reached peak Harambe. Did you see this? Mm, we were peak, arguing. I heard you talking about peak Harambe, but I don't know what the bet is. All I right, so the, the bet was two weeks ago. We were arguing, first of all, about we were uh, trying to figure out where this weird meme of the Dick's Alpha Harambe thing came from. But it, I heard it today on, I swear to God, it was like on, on some serious Channel. The Big Bang Theory, like I know, no. like NPR, no. like, like, no. like no, on no, the media. No, like, no, like, yeah. it was the gay, uh, the gay Hillary channel. Uh, MSNBC. No. <laughs> no, the really gay, the, the gay white, the white gay guy Hillary channel. That's Progressive One Twenty Seven on Sirius. So, got, oh, it, got, got it. Got Michelangelo it. Signorelli. So the question was at the time: Had we reached peak Harambe? Because if you if you looked on the Google Trends search, like, uh, like it okay. had reached, like mm -hmm. it, it was almost bigger than the initial search. No, when no, the news no, came no, out. no, no! It's already gotten bigger than than the initial news. Harambe is bigger now. Yes, dead. Then he was then when he, he was died. When he initially died. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When it, when it was an actual like, oh my God, what, did the zookeepers mm -hmm. do the right mm -hmm. thing? Right. I don't right. know. Right. And now that he's a joke. He's way bigger. So People I, talk I, about I, him way more. I bet yet another steak in my increasingly tall stack of steaks. I'm just going to buy a cow to Justin to settle debts. I bet that two weeks ago we had we would be at a lower point now in Harambe popularity yeah. than we were But you're checking your popularity on the keyword No, Harambe? no, Google Trends. Just Google the trend. Trends. Trends. Of how many people are typing it in. Wow. And Bryce, do Except you have... Uh oh. There's what? new information. What? About Harambe? Yes, today. There's a second shooter? <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. Right. I'm in the right show. Very good. Very good. So to speak. What? what? So to speak, because there's a baby gorilla. Oh, that's right. Oh, the Chinese oh, China. Yeah. The they fake had thing. An open, uh, they open Harambe McHarambe face yes. is what they named right. him. Which is also Aww. not real. Does feed oh. had an article that said, hey, it was actually kind of did not ever happen. What? So it didn't happen. They didn't actually name them that? No. No, they didn't even have the contest. No, no, it's a, a fake, fake contest about a fake gorilla Sorry. in a fake country it's called China. It's a conspiracy. China. So. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> have you ever been to China? Have you ever seen a Hold Chinese? On, man. Why don't you check Snopes? They know <laughs> yeah, what's up. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Snopes will know, man. Oh. They, those guys know what's up. All right, so here we yeah. go. Uh, 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 well, let, let me ask you, Adam. Yeah, uh, what's your bet? Do you feel that we have already hit peak Harambe, or are we still escalating? No, I think you're, it's still escalating because I'm getting into it now. Uh, I'm so a little uh, late to the party, but uh, I think uh, I can uh, think of, uh, Did you not see my tweet for the show? Uh, yeah, I did, I did, I did, I did. Dicks out yeah, for yeah, Harambe. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to All, right. all of everybody, to their work. dicks. Listen, my Snapchat is Justin R. Young. Uh, go ahead, and, and if your dick is out for Harambe, Prove it. <laughs> By the way, we asked Bonnie why she thought the dicks out for Harambe thing was a meme, and her answer was because penises look like dead gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> Am I the only one who remembered that? Well, I remember. Put it like that. You make, <laughs> well, well, you make, you make yeah. me sound like a monster. Yeah. Oh my god. 
Wait, wait. Actually, the, the right response that? is technically I said your dick looks like a dick. All right, so let's go to the Google <laughs> Trends. Uh, Google Trends, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we, uh, <gasps> we, uh, we, believe, we, we last checked on August 31st. Uh, wow. Where Numbers in a twelve months, with this? I just see it calls it at eighty-eight percent of peak. Yeah, 80, 80, yeah. So, so as of uh, oh, so uh, what they estimate for this week, we're lean of peak. We are at sixty-eight percent. Eight from oh, September eleventh yeah. to the seventeenth. So this week, as of this week, Harambe, yeah, we've to, reached peak. Harambe, we're past we've peak. Harambe. Harambe. Harambe, I think we can see a double dip. I think we can see a. Double it could go formation. back up. It could totally, it could have a reversal. How could we? How could we reignite America's you, love I, for I, Harambe? You guys can't hatch a plan. That's not why fair. not. No, I why? won <laughs> fair and square. Hey, oh, I, I forgot it was a bet. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, I got yeah. it. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't step in when you brought up the dead dick gorilla yeah, all right, thing. All right, that's fine. Go ahead. How do you think we could we could recapture America's Triple love for this dead? This, this this dead gorilla, I feel like we need something. We need like a movie. What about a uh, song? Can we can we, can we have Young a Thug actually has a song called Harambe out now. Can we can we do a uh, a presidential pardon <laughs> for the shooter of Harambe? <laughs> By the way, collect on joint. God collect on joint. God damn it! Uh, I was wrong. Hey, <laughs> what did you think? It, you I, think? I thought it was something USB connected. I I was sure. I grew up in Amsterdam. Yeah. So uh, it's, all right. Yeah, so here, let's yeah, yeah. let's let's bring this in now. Uh, uh, Brian and Adam are, are texting to. Uh, Thank knock God out, I got you off Harambe. Knock <laughs> out the logistics <laughs> and stuff. Uh, now it's Harganje. Hug, no, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Take it back. And Take uh, it back. and all of a sudden, uh, he's like, "Oh, hey, listen. Do you mind if we if I bring weed?" And we, it becomes a conversation. No. On no, no, what? No, 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 no. It started off okay. The invitation for the show. Yes. And I said I know the show. It's a fun show. Yep. yep. It also has the initials N A, like no agenda. Correct. No attack, so you know. Which, by the way, there was a bit of a conversation. Is it a no attack or a night agenda? And I think we came down on team night agenda. I'm, I like night agenda. Yeah. Night yeah. Agenda oh yeah. Much good. better. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I said, you know, these guys get drunk on the show, or at least you're drinking. I mean, and I'm a very, I get drunk very quickly. Yeah. And uh, so Dvorak so how, said, how you know, you, you uh, shouldn't have more than two. And I said, so I can work with, we I can fly helicopters on weed. I can do anything on weed. Have you yeah. flown a, you've flown a helicopter? Yes, I have. Yeah. High yeah. as fuck. I, I, I can't make mm -hmm. a sentence on weed. I don't understand. Again, I, Amsterdam. Uh, okay, all right. I grew all up, right, I grew up right. with it. Uh, but yeah, but when I, I, mean, I have a helicopter license. Uh-huh. And um, after flying, I, my instructor sometimes he'd be with me, and we'd sit in you know my house and like you know I'd smoke a joint. He says, "Hey man, why don't you see how you do after you smoke that joint?" I'm like, "Well, he's gonna go with me, of course." Sure, like, sure, yeah. Sure. So, Hell so, yeah. So you got a you got an adult on the other controls. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. it was best landing ever. No kidding. Oh yeah, smooth. Yeah. Completely. Paying attention to all no, the I, details. Like, yeah. Just kiss the ground. <laughs> so yeah. what, what is it that you find that it does? Like, uh, it just uh, like t it seems like a time machine. Everything slows down. So you got plenty of time to correct as you're landing? You can control your mind on weed. You can tell it what to do. It can be sharp. It can be laid back. I think he's got some good yeah. weed. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that's a problem, Brian. You've been having stank <laughs> shit. Yeah, there's somewhere there's a, you should, there's, if you if you Google Adam Curry in my plane, Adam Curry airplane joint, you can see a picture. Uh, I, had my, I had my airplane. Uh, have you, oh, have Jesus. you there smoking? It is. Uh, all right. Well, uh, wait for it. Yeah, wait you got to find it. No, it's like a close up. <laughs> Turns picture. out there's a bit of noise wow. when, when you type wow. in Adam Curry joint. <laughs> Uh, no, plain joint, right? P L A N E. Yeah, right? yeah, P L. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah uh, just plain. Uh, there plain. We go. I yeah. still think you spell that with a T H. Uh, I don't. I you know. What? I don't think. Uh, <laughs> have you? Have has you it been about buried into now? that that emerging branded weed phenomenon? As no. more and more states, uh, no. you, you don't no. have your own. Why brand not? Weed? No. I, I, no. I, I, I want to have. My How, own I'm in weed. Austin, Texas. I'm not going to compete with Willie. He's I, a fucking master. Well, okay. No. You could be Pepsi to his Coke, though. <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> think so. You're like, no, choice of a no, new I generation. Don't so. I, don't, I do <laughs> not think so. I'll tell you, Austin would have some great branded weed, right? <laughs> like sure. Willie, oh, yeah. The Undertaker, Adam Curry. <laughs> 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 I feel like this if is this you is want maximum you want Dude. <laughs> maximum paranoia, you get the Alex but, Jones weed. Yeah. But, but, but you know, if you go to like um, Washington, and Dvorak has a house up there. Right. And weed is legal there. Do you know who's in the dispensaries? Uh, Willie Nelson. Old ladies. Yeah. Oh, dude. Old ladies. Because they, you know, the uh, arthritis, you know, the weed helps so much more. And they're like, I'm never going to take those, the medication from the doctor anymore. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Weed. yeah. Well, I, I'm in Oakland. I mean, you know who's, who's mostly, I see all the time in the dispensaries in Oakland. 
Mm-hmm. Literally everybody. <laughs> <laughs> just a revolving door. Literally everybody in the city. Nice. I'm just I'm just nice. imagining a pug, like you know, in line or a. Dowshound or a, a Dowshound? A, 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 a Dachshund? <laughs> talking Dachshund? A, Dachshund? a wiener dog? I've only I, I just I'm I'm reading it in my mind. The Kush yeah. is already yeah. too loud. Yeah, I had for to body. hear this. Maybe you'd be able to <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. well, okay, so let's 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 take bets. Um how long until we see nationwide legalization of weed do you think? Um I don't, I mean, you can't really have, first of all, it's, it's a federal offense still, you know, which is nutty. Sure. It's, it's um, technically classified it's, as, as heroin, a Schedule 1. Yeah, heroin, same as heroin, yeah, right? Yeah. It's, that's, you know, okay. Insane, right? Yeah. Um, so that's problem one, but, you know, just all the states have to do it individually. I'm surprised about Texas. I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed of all the things we can do here, of all the freedoms that I love about Texas. You know, sure, sure. Really? You know, and Willie Nelson is your number one guy? Have we, have we had a, I don't think we've had a ballot initiative yet. Uh, that that's. I had think a, everybody just looks the other way. Uh, like Willie we, gets arrested plenty of times, you know, still? to make an example out of him. Oh yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, it's kind of shitty. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I mean, I know Florida I, came close, but they had to have like a super. They fell. Sh- they 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 had a majority. They didn't have like the super majority that they needed to to get it legalized. But even. Like they still have some medical clearances, I guess. Now, like it's happening everywhere. Like it, it's just a matter of well, time. Th- that is that is the most remarkable, I think, big uh, political thing that's happened in my lifetime is watching the re- repeal of prohibition mm. on uh, mm. at least for marijuana happening like live. That's extraordinary. I got to tell you, I I grew up uh, along the border, and I feel like there's a Te- fear. Texas border. Yeah, the Texas mm-hmm. border. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a fear of what would happen if all of a sudden we legalize things and that total income that happens along the borders. Ah, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. I know what's happening with that. I, f- yeah. I figured it out when Trump went to Mexico. I yeah. figured out, of course I know what he was doing there. He's buying yeah. pot. No. No. <laughs> no. No. First of all, the new president in, in Mexico, he's connected. I mean, you right. can't be alive as a president in Mexico and not be connected. Sure. And, you know, probably one cartel, and it's pretty obvious which one that might be. I don't want to say Sinaloa, but maybe. You know. Yeah. Um, so Trump went. Now, Trump is connected. You know, you can't be in the New York builder business without being connected. I'm pretty sure he went there and he said, it's time to talk about something. I'm going to build this wall and there's going to be a door for people and there's going to be a door for the drugs. Oh, and shit. You're gonna be, yeah, you cannot stop the, the drugs. But controlling it, having that, you know, or skimming off the top. I mean, HSBC, the banks, were everyone's involved in this. So I think it's just, you know, hey, man, we're going to funnel this shit. Take it easy. No big deal. You're gonna pay for the wall out of your cut of the proceeds. Sure. <laughs> and 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 do you think do you think that that's all? Uh, is the supposition that it's just too third rail, it's too taboo to talk about legalization and and just actually because it, there'd be a, well, I mean, a when you talk about Mexico, we're talking about not just weed, we're talking you know coke, heroin, right. everything's coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's one of the strange things in the United States, but I'll tell you, it was first um, having grown up in Amsterdam again and most of liberal Europe. Um, you know, like, oh, you Americans, you, you know, they don't want gay marriage. They're, you know, anti-homo. Uh, uh, that's literally the sound the yeah, Europeans are making. Exactly. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> you, you, you go yeah. into the voting booth and it's like, please make yeah. a sound of how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, Funny enough, that was Harambe's last words. <laughs> I think of that fucking picture. So what happens is that now in the United States, where you know, gay marriage is pretty much we have eight states left or something. Yeah, it's, sure, it's sure. Quick, um, it's more liberal here for uh, LGBT LGBTQIAP to do right. the full acronym um, than in Amsterdam. And because, you know, the, the Europe started this multicultural society, you know, 15, 20 years ago, and it's a fucking mess. You know, because you, now you, people getting beat up on the street by other cultures who do not like seeing what's taking place. So it's a culture is a word for Muslim, by the way. Uh, yeah. Well, so uh, speaking of it. All right. Separate wait, side. Wait, I got that. really confused. Uh, what's what's so. up with the with the shaming of modesty in France <laughs> with the burkini that they banned? Yeah, I was there. Oh, yeah. oh, you were there? I went. Well, not during the. I went two weeks later. Sure. Okay. I went. To well, Paris. here we go. Our our number one uh, burkini correspondent. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Hi, everybody. Right. Shh. I'm here on the beaches of Nice. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you. Shh. Uh, so. Uh, first, I was in Paris a couple of months ago, not long after Bataclan, because whenever there's a terrorist attack, you got to go. It's the best time to go. You're safe. 
and men. Oh, you mean and, after, not during the terrorist no, no, attack? After. <laughs> right after. <laughs> because uh, no. because we, we we went to we to went to uh, uh, to Con France for Con Leones, yeah. and uh, and then that was when they staged their big Uber protest, and yeah. like they were like, right. hey, we're gonna get you to the airport a little bit earlier because they're right, kind of throwing right, cinder right. blocks. Well, and, Uber was doing yeah. pretty pretty good in Paris, actually. Yeah. It, okay, right it, on. It wasn't too bad, and it was really friendly. Thank you so much for coming to visit our city. Uh, you know, I had very different attitude towards Americans, but now we love them, and we're, yeah, we sure. need to change our attitudes in general. Um, but again, having seen what happened in, because uh, I lived in uh, Amsterdam, I lived in Antwerp, I lived in London, and it's the same thing. You have you know ghettos, ghettoization, really of all different cultures, which are never integrated. Um, how how and, long did you live in each of those? Was well, I, it, and how I, old were you? I moved to Amsterdam when I was seven. And okay. was there until mm, until I left for MTV, so 21, 22, something oh, wow. like that. Oh, yeah. wow. So, came so back and forth. Were, were you alive? And I'm uh, forgive me, I'm not familiar with the uh, legalization. Thank you. Uh, no, sorry, that, that's not where I was headed. But <laughs> yeah. but like like, were you around to watch the legalization movement happen in Amsterdam, or that just was always it was the never way it illegal? Was. What are okay, you talking it, about? Mo- yeah. Legalization movement? Yeah, what? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just a thing. It was like this. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is this legal? Yeah. No, no. The the movement was from waist to mouth with the lighter. That was a whole movement. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> it was, and it's celebrated to this day. Um, I'll tell you what. That is one of those. So, oh, sorry. I'm gonna go back to the burkinis. Yes, please. Yeah, burkinis. Here we so, go. But having seen, it's very odd because. I mean, the things that the French say, or many Europeans will say, and I'm not talking about the crazy right wing, uh, you know, Le Pen or Geert Wilders or Farage, which of course are just, you know, kind of people, you know, guys of the people, in my opinion. Um, When you see your street change literally from colors of Benetton to black, black garb, got it, just shuffling along, sure. um, It's annoying. Intimidating. It's annoying. And then, well, I don't know if it's intimidating, but people like, and of course, it's it's their own, it's their government. It's a different world. But, you know, people get the government they deserve, so it's their own fault, ultimately. So it's not, you know, whatever it is. But, so the burkini, I really understand where the French are coming from. Like, no, fuck you. No, just no. We got eighty fucking people dead over here. You know, and they're climbing on the rocks. They were they were trying to come in from Italy near Monaco, and the and the and they could climb on the rocks to try and get into France. And the and the police are pepper spraying these fuckers off the rocks. Jeez. I mean, it was in, it's insane what's going on there. In Europe, not you know. Not a good place long term, I don't think, or medium term. Well, I, 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 they had their time. Enough with them. <laughs> I agree. Oh, I agree. Old Jesus. world. Down with the old. Dicks out for old world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So then, I, I guess I, I'm not really up on the whole burkini thing. So what? They just said, they, "Hey, they, we don't like. Uh, we don't like that. This is obviously uh, tied to the Islamic religion. This and is correlated. Yeah. Yeah. We want to see it off the beaches. And right. France, of course, is is you know famous for their um, semi nude, complete nude beaches. Correct. Just, yeah. And the beautiful beachwear, beautiful people. Sure. You know. So I I, I understand where the and it's not a nationwide ban. It's you know Paris, it was on like a Paris couple and beaches. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really only weird. And uh, uh, Paris has uh, public. Places for uh, the uh, hijab. Man. That's just I think the hijab is the scarf. Niqab is the is the thing that goes over where you see the eyes. And Got then it. The burqa is you know the Faraday cage. Got it. Yeah. Which is a great product by the way. <laughs> burqa burqa Faraday cage. <laughs> you're safe. Hey, you, got, you got all your <laughs> NFC devices on the you're inside. Safe. You're, you're like, safe. You're safe here. You're, you're good to go. Not a problem. Oh man, I just remember. When we went to um, Con Leon, they had uh, those posters for not oh, peeing Jesus in public. Oh, Christ. Yeah. Were you guys doing you in I, 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 uh, Google, the- Google was doing a thing featuring YouTubers, so they asked, like, the slow-mo guys and, and you know, a bunch of people. Would di- they asked me to do my magic show and teach Are a little you a scam school. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, have you never seen Scam School? Yeah, of that's, course I've seen scams. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's, I guess I'm a YouTuber. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, how many su- subscribers are you I'm have the on oldest, your channel? I'm the oldest YouTuber you on YouTube. YouTube? I, mean, yeah. I, I, I told yeah. some people oh today as I'm going on Night Attack, and uh-huh. I'm like, huh? I said, Brian Busher, huh? I said, yeah, Scam School. Scam School! Yeah. 
Uh, that was the weird cool. thing where oh, like yeah. uh, my kids didn't care at all. Like we we did the hacking the system TV yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Nobody gave it. Uh, the kids didn't get. That a was on test. TV, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That was on yeah. Nat Geo, and then mm-hmm. um uh, it hit. By the way, yeah. you have yeah. Nat Geos in your bathroom. Uh, I do. Thank you. That's oh, very, I do. Yes, very kind of kids. you. That's very uh, kind yeah, of you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's good National ones. Geographic, uh, there's good ones this month. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's good ones this month. <laughs> <laughs> big, big black boobs. <laughs> 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 Is that even it? Wait, is that wait? Hold on, wait. Is that even a thing these days? Like in in a world where National Geographic? (laughs) No, yeah. When you're 52, it still qualifies as a joke. (laughs) No, but that's nostalgic. nostalgic. It's a nostalgia boner. It's in your bathroom. It's it's like smelling a perfume (laughs) of a certain lady. (laughs) Because by the way, you have double fisting on your phone if you want, right? Like. You know, you don't need to go to the Nat Geo. I, I just don't even know if that's a thing. Is there anybody <laughs> under twenty five that's jerked off to a Nat Geo magazine? Man, I would. I wonder if there's... Bonnie has a knee fetish. I'm I'm curious. Anybody in the chat room? Are you knees. under twenty five and have jacked off to a a, a Nat fact, Geo? Yeah, can you open up the Skype line? <laughs> no, <laughs> so if anyone no. wants to tell us, See, I Adam, want a Adam Curry person. speaks for the people. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Finally, I answering know, the big I know questions. What's up. I know what's Night up. Night agenda. Yeah, I know what's up. See, yeah, nobody. Nobody's no, ever, because this no. is all prominent pornography so, all right, so let's, let's, online. Well, let's talk about pornography, because yeah. uh, oh, hello. it's pretty great. Yeah, uh, yeah you have my attention. No, okay, so. Uh, uh, you know, my but, first gig was uh, I did a, I dubbed a porn movie. What? Yes, and it received a fully erect Hustler, award, a fully erect penis award from Hustler. Fuck yes, yeah. that's amazing. Wait, all right, all right, all right. You dubbed a porn. Explain, yeah. explain what dubbing a porn movie what, is. Well, first of all, have you ever noticed that any porn before 1990 has like, like oh, it's, it's, all, it's almost it's all like all an ASMR? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's like it's like sync. they're just talking into the yeah. mic. Oh yeah. Cool. Oh, so it's like 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 yeah. Uh huh. Oh, oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, well, it's yeah. Like, I, I still remember lines from the movie. Yeah. Go on. Go on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right, everybody, quiet, quiet, quiet. Here we go. Uh, what's your line? Hey, baby, I- I'm from the c- city health inspection. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so you were there presumably to inspect the health. Okay, so of, um, of her tacos. There was this uh, this guy who I knew who was actually a, uh, had a record company in Holland, and this I was still on the pirate radio. I was mm, I was maybe 18, 17 or eighteen. Wait, you were doing like full on pirate radio? Oh yeah, yeah, the, FM the, like, pirate radio. So so and how how would you hide where your transmission? Oh no, from? well, so you have to understand that. Um, in the 70s and the 80s, uh, the Netherlands was like, you know, like Russia. You had gray phones. You couldn't get a, your own phone. Right. Um, and there was, you know, there were three uh, government-run radio stations and two television channels. And the television channels would both start at 7 p.m. with, like, the same dude reading the news right, simultaneously. Right. And then it would end at, you know, like 11.15. It's like, go to bed, slaves. You're done. Right. Uh, and the radio station would also start at 7 a.m. and end at midnight, and the Top 40 station, which pl- pretty much played polka music, right. you know, it would, it, like, but, the, you, but the Top 40 but you, but, polka song. But you have the best, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. You know. None of that bullshit old uh-uh. polka. Uh-uh, no. So you, you know, you'd have the radio on at like five minutes to seven, you'd hear, dum, 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 Hilfersum 3. Which meant... Party's over. No, Hilversum three, which is the the, the station. The, the station. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it was just the whole night up until 7 a.m., dum, 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 Hilversum 3. Wait, so so no content. No content. Just station ID. Yes. And the way it was set up is religious groups based upon um, subscribers to their TV guides. So we had 15 TV guides. Right. They would get uh, more more subscribers the more airtime. Right. So this sucked balls. Yeah. And we had transmitters. How powerful? Oh, we had we had what we called Harry's. Um, and we would get these um, big tube transmitters, uh, surplus German Army transmitters, oh, nice. which were, I think, the smallest one was 300 watts. Then we had... What the heck? Really? Then we had... Well, the, well later we had a kilowatt. I mean, we, we had a kilowatt. Dude, okay, to put it in perspective, like, the, the, the most powerful... Le- because we learned... My dad had a few acres, and he wanted to listen to his Rush Limbaugh, so he would pirate, he right. would pirate the Rush Limbaugh. It has like, 50 so milliwatts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, and so uh, he bought from uh, Canada. In fact, it's in that closet right now. We have the antenna and everything. It's a 20-watt transmitter. The most... The legally you can only do like a like a hundred milliwatts yeah. basically. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. That's hugely powerful. Yeah. Well, so- not when you're doing it yourself, <laughs> Mr. Brushwood. <laughs> A uh, salute to you as you sit in your <laughs> lawnmower. <laughs> that's the uh, <laughs> El <Rushbow>. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. 
Christ. So okay, so so you decide you get a hold of this equipment, and what is it you decide to transmit, and and how? Oh well, um, so again, this is eighty eighty one, and really big at the time were import records. So we get twelve inch imports. Um, you know, but this is the time when uh, Chicago Warehouse, you know, all this, this Frankie Knuckles, this was all really kind of starting. In fact, Madonna, if you remember, well, maybe you don't, uh, after she banged Jelly Bean and she got her first record deal, it was released already. This was the record with Like a Virgin and Borderline and Lucky Star, and that was released a year before it was re-released in the States and became a hit. And she was over at our station, you know, hawking it, doing Hash Under Glass with everybody, just no trying to, yeah. kidding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. God Wait, damn yeah. the stories on this one. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. I uh, can go all night. <laughs> I'm excited. We have all night. <laughs> well, what were we talking about? Something about so, the transmitters. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. So, so anyway, so Harambe. Uh, <laughs> You no, gotta okay. wonder. Okay, so 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 tell me about the first time that you start broadcasting, and how worried are you? Is it the kind of thing that nobody's thinking about? Well, I assume at the time it's a lot like software piracy was in the early '90s, where it's like nobody was pausing to even consider implications was, and who a, was looking. Well, it was a it was a much more meta moment, really. There's a couple of things that happened at the same time. So I, when I was 15, um, I had. One of these uh, Radio Shack 101 projects. Yeah, were, dude, those were amazing. We yeah. had the, the red wires, the blue yeah, yeah, wires, you, you, different you lengths, little, little springs. springs. You put yep. that, and one of them was, was a transmitter. Yep. So I replicated that, built a little, you know, a bigger transmitter, and just had it on at home. And I just put a record on, literally put a record on to see how far it would go. My, my mom actually would drive me around the block to that's see how far it would go. That, yeah, that, yeah, she would drive me around the block to see how far it went. Station. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, very sweet. And the neighbor, the neighborhood kids were like. Well, this is kind of cool. You, what are you doing? So I'm like, oh, okay. So I built a mixer so I could play two records. Okay, how do you build a mixer? Because I remember... It, well, the it, first it, mixer I built was pretty shit. But, yeah, you, know, you get schematics and you put it together. I'm like, so I can solder. I'm okay with that. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so, and so you, you've got some dials and, right. you're, and you're mixing and, yourself. And I got a mic and then I just started doing a little bit of shit. I really practiced for years until there was a job opening at a closed-circuit hospital radio station. So, okay, and, okay. And they said... Yeah, and it was an ad. You had to be 16, um, yeah, 16 or yeah. 17. And uh, anyway, I wasn't old enough. My parents said, go ahead, and you, you can lie and tell them you're old enough. And I auditioned as an engineer and as an on-air host. And I did not get on-air host, but I got, I got engineer. Right. So, And I was good at that. And there I met people. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy's fucking good. And I'm listening. And he said, and, you know, I would do couple other shows at home and eventually said, you know, there's this station that I work at in Amsterdam, you should come check it out and you should do it in English. And so I created this persona, John Holden, uh, black, drove a Harley, 32 years old. <laughs> And, and so, and, and am Wait, I right? Uh, how, I sound, I sound, I sounded pretty black. I sound, yeah, <laughs> so cute. you wouldn't, you wouldn't do a voice or anything. No, like, it was just me. Just you. Just me. Yeah. But People you thought had I was the black. voice of a 32 year old motorcycle driving black. The man. illusion was complete. There so, we go. Yeah. So and, and Europe's I, weird. Am I, there's <laughs> not enough black people. Right. <laughs> am I right in understanding that around that time in the days of radio, and I think it's, I, I, I assume it's less true now, but, but it just seemed like it was assumed that everyone had a fake on air personality name or whatever. Like it was all. Like, I remember in Houston, I think, there was that, Hudson no, and Harrigan. I, th I think that's still the case. I yeah, mean, oh, really? I, oh, Adam, Adam Curry's a great DJ name, so I never had to change that. Right. But, like, um, so the guy who hired me at MTV is now um, the CEO of NPR, and his name is Jarl Mohn. <laughs> but I never knew him as Jarl Mohn. That's J-A-R-L-M-O-H-N. Right. I know him as Lee Masters. Hey, everybody, Lee Masters here! Got it. Got Cleveland! It. How you doing? Yeah, Um so yeah. So if we're not ju just Yara for Mon does purposes. sound like a good name for the porn character that well, you were voicing. Now though. let me tell you about porn. So he was the toughest yeah. mini boss in Skyrim. <laughs> Yarl Mon, he was yeah, his man. He's a real Sorry, bitch. So around the same time, um, the Netherlands is one of the uh, uh, most densely cabled countries in the world, but it was all central antenna. Mm -hmm. So you'd have a you know um, uh, there would be one antenna. They'll be on the corner of a big apartment building would feed, you know, like an entire district of one town. It was just, you know, repeaters. Um, and so while we're doing all this radio shit and we're, you know, we're figuring stuff out, we, you know, basically when you look at your cable channel and then at, at 11.15 when the, when the television would go off, then a test pattern would come up. Right. Yeah. But what was happening was the transmitters in Hilversum or wherever they were went off and the system just knew to throw up a test pattern. But if you turned on a signal... 
So, then so the test pattern would go away, and it would amplify that signal throughout this entire district or sometimes an entire this town. This is the same kind of injection hack. We just covered this on- We were on, literally on sitting with antennas and VCRs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Aiming to, to the, the repeaters. The yeah. yeah. And the, boom. And, and then, of course, porn. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> That's amazing. You, I'm sure you can look it up. You know, por pirate porn TV in Amsterdam. It was fucking amazing. Oh, my God. So you were there for that moment. We did that. That's He's amazing. doing it. We no. were doing a DB He TV. was the porn okay. injector. Yeah. What is the yes. What is the end? Uh, what is the end hoped for goal in this moment when you guys are like, hey, man. We had to show it. somebody a dick. No. no. <laughs> Yeah, it was no. for Haram Dude, yeah, to show somebody yeah. a dead Dicks. gorilla. Dicks at night. We had advertising. Here's how. Oh, here's sure. how. Yeah, Drake. Wait, hold on. Searching is I searched pirate porn TV in Amsterdam and got <laughs> zero results. Wow. 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 Absolutely we'll try nothing. Pirate TV in Amsterdam. Uh, oh, we 80? got safe search on. That's probably. Oh. Oh. See. What kind of show is this? Ah. Hey, this is Brian's account. Ah, there we go. Uh -huh. Pirates of the Porno Bay. No, I mean, we're, talk, we're talking porno. 80s, man. We're talking 80s. Uh, yeah. We'll Long see what we can find. Nah, anyway. It turns out you find all of the internet with that search. <laughs> exactly. All roads lead to pirate porn in Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, wow, that's extraordinary. So so how did you guys figure this out? Was there somebody that you knew that knew, you know, this is the frequency, this is the it gizmo? It was obvious. Oh, really? Yeah, the transmitter goes off, and this thing comes up. If the transmitter went back on, then the test pattern would go down. So it was obvious all you had to do was modulate on the right frequency, and you're good to go. And so are you guys going to the library to get these books in a pre-internet era, or or you just know somebody who knows somebody how to uh, how to make the gizmos that do the I, things? I'm a, I, we were soldering. I, and on the weekends, I worked at a, an electronics store. I sold resistors and transistors. And I actually was able to um, sell uh, the VIC-20. Oh and, yeah, and we sure, were hacking. Sure. Remember hacking the games? And you like get the ROM, you like suck it out onto your cassette tape, and like bypass the copy protection. Dude, they thought yeah, they no, had we in had there. we had Vic twenties when I was in second grade. And the grade. BBC would broadcast, you know, the programs for your Acorn. Uh, oh my God, they it was would, like, and you and you, you know, would just it, it was hit like record for, and yeah, and for like five minutes you hear. Sure, sure. Like a modem. Yeah, you know, like 75 baud or something. God, even man, very slow. Days. Hey, hi, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're, uh, we're all, we're on this team over here. No, <laughs> I know. Jeez. And I did it all <laughs> while smoking weed. That's, uh, yeah, how old were you when you first smoked weed? Oh, uh, 13, 12. And it was, it, it was just everybody was, was. You could also go into a bar and order a drink if you looked 15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because it's no big deal. Guess what? It's no fucking big deal. Yeah. Hey, can I ask you this? So there is, for whatever reason, even as we legalize weed in, in more and more states, there still is this resistance to just smoking weed in bars. I feel like that's like another frontier of American not, culture. Not, not when I was in we have not LA. opened up. I mean, it's already rude I'm smoking here in this small studio, but fuck yeah, it, I'm sure. the guest. Oh, no, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. Well, well, vape stuff has kind of changed it a little bit. Now, uh, vape, forget. Vape's going to end. That's going to be a dumb product. You know, there's no way be, anyone you can compete. Are, so you, are, you, are, you, are, you are bearish on vaping. Well, I, I, I vaped for a while. I really like it. A, fr yeah. a friend of mine makes e-juice. So, yeah, so very, you're talking I, about... I, I went to the vape con in Dallas, if you can believe that. You did? <laughs> yeah, I went to vape con. To va how was yeah. it? Did you have a booth? You go... At, my friend had a booth. <laughs> friend, you, okay. you, go, you go in, and it's just like this cloud... It's just kind of hanging over everything. They would flip on the, you know, some big switch every half hour or something. But and I mean, just vape the room. But you see the fucking, and that's where I actually bought it there. And this is a year ago, maybe even longer. Um, uh, the, the the things that blow up the, uh, uh, they stand on the hoverboard. Oh, sure, 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 so sure, sure. They're yeah. like dudes vaping on hoverboards. I'm like, I got to do that. <laughs> so I got me a hoverboard. I'm vaping around. Like, yeah. yeah. It's great. So then what Then what? What makes you bearish? It sounds like you had a great, beautiful time. Oh, because the law changed. You know, they passed a law, which basically, if you want a, uh, any kind of product, the, um, although it's not tobacco, the firearms, tobacco, uh, alcohol, the ATF, yeah. and bomb yep, people. Yep, yep, yep. Is F? What is it? Firearms. Uh, firearms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, tobacco firearms. Uh, they have appropriated all nicotine products, which I think can be contested, but it's it's hard. So now, if you want to launch a product, it's going to cost about a million for just a new line of e-juice. You know what? Change to four percent nicotine. You're going to have to go through the test again. Gotcha. So it'll be underground. People will still make it in their bathtubs and stuff. Well, uh, but but, but problem, you think right, is whenever yeah. you make a law, you just get weasels yeah. that, that are unaccountable for whatever they're doing. So, and and you think, but I mean, it seems like it's it's exploding that. You well, know that that people are are vaping all the time. Yeah, I think I think 
um, so, I mean, vaping I, is going to be um, a, a medicinal uh, device. It's going to be classified as such, probably. Um, so so, there, there, so it, it, it'll, it'll be more known for weed smoking than it will be for just people who have like a in, nicotine substitute. I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I think the nicotine is a problem. It's, Man, it's yeah. a problem. I don't know, guys. I just got back from DEF CON, and fucking vaping is alive no, and well. As long as you don't want, if, as long as you have enough nicotine in it, if you just want to have, you know, banana flavor or whatever. I mean, right, my, right, right. My buddy makes, uh, what does he make, Blow Nut oh. and, uh, and Blue <laughs> Awful. <laughs> it's all about the branding. It's, it's, the branding is fantastic. Vape them yeah. if you got them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, do you think there's... Much to the, uh, I, I I haven't paid too much attention. You probably know more about this than I do. But there's there's talk about like you know vaping is bad for you as smoking, and I'm like mm. I can't make that possibly true in my no, mind. No, the only thing is that Gene, what's that chemical called that makes you shit? Uh, laxative. Because you told me, I was like, because you told me about it, and, and I was like, we, we no wonder room. I gotta take a shit all the time. Chat room will know. What's Hold the on. chemical that makes you Alestra? shit? Oh, Alestra. No, 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 that's no. anal it's leakage. Anal leakage. Yeah. Different Alestra. animal. Yeah. Different animal. By the way, we yeah. should point out. Yeah, propyl. Yeah. Propylene glycol. Propylene glycol. Propylene glycol. Got it. Propylene glycol, glycol which you need, is really the, the basic product, the basic vape ingredient, yeah. uh, can give you the runs if you use it excessively. I mean, that seems fairly minor. Okay, but that's not like lung cancer, right? That's a different <laughs> thing than lung cancer? <laughs> Pretty sure. Because I'd probably rather sh like shit my butthole out uh, <laughs> and just pee out my butt all day than have lung cancer. All right, can, can we talk real quick side jag? I mean, yeah, there are people who can smoke. Is that, is that controversial? <laughs> no. Hashtag I join the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Reddit.com <laughs> slash hard dot slash well, you know, the, There is popcorn lung. This is true. You can get popcorn lung. So when and that is something that is can be kind of permanent. So when you breathe in, you you get a kind of rattly popcorny yeah, sound you from a your bunch lungs. Of butter and then you eat it. It's a delicious. Well, it, that is, it actually it, it is the stuff that, that they make artificial butter with. Oh Jesus! Isn't it gene? Isn't that what it is? Yeah. The, one of the main flavor ingredients that all the car caramel stuff. It's it's bad. That's not really good. Can, for can we it. talk about the gene in the room? Because uh, I'm so I'm sorry. <laughs> in I, the room, I wouldn't uh, have brought him in. No, this is great. This is great. So this, so, is, this is not just gene. This is Sir this is, Gene. This is Duke. He's a Duke now. Are you Duke? Duke of Texas, Baron de Marriott. Shh, Baron Marriott, <laughs> Sheriff of Austin, is that it? Something like that. Yeah, Gene's been a, been a big supporter for me. I'll tell you what, one more years. one 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 more title for him, and we'd be in Aleppo territory. <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember it. <laughs> so, uh, so Gene, how did you? Not a good one. I didn't even think about it for a second. How did you meet Gene? Because Gene was uh, we we had swapped emails early on, and Gene was an early contributor to uh, uh, the scam stuff. Um, uh, not Kickstarter, uh, whatever we did. I was, Indie doing, I was doing the Hot Pockets tour. Um, yeah, I don't know about the hot pockets tour. Oh well, I did a tour with an RV and did meetups around the country, and you know we said wouldn't it be great if Hot Pockets sponsored it, and they didn't, but we still call it the Hot Pockets tour. Good, you know, it's good, it's still kind of cool. Um, and I think we, it was the Hot Pockets tour 2009, even though it was 2012, because that was Obama had just <laughs> signed, remember Obama had just signed his name in the Westminster Abbey, and it did it last year. Oh no, that? I, I, so, I so missed we like, that. Oh, That's fuck, hilarious. It's all 2009 now, according to Obama. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and um, Gene, I think it's the first time Gene was like, "Hey, you know, you're coming through Dallas, and I'll hook you guys up. I'll get you a nice room." And uh, take out the cigar bar, and you know, and yes, he did all that. And I was like, oh, "This is a pretty cool fucking dude." And then, you know, little did I know, he was a stalker, and he's like moved to Austin to be close to me. <laughs> either that, <laughs> either that, or he's my CIA well, that's handler. The problem, that's, right? that's, like, like, that's the that's the real. Gene question. has an intimidating physique, and he does think like um like we we go to this uh, business academy, yeah, I mean, and we find out a puppy dog. Wait, 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 okay, that's fine, physique. but but we we find out that like the room that we're in is named after him, yeah, and then oh, yeah. Yeah, and then he happens. hands me his business card yeah. that has no phone number no it's email a, it just says gene yeah. after left legitimate <laughs> businessman <laughs> right yeah he's no it's true cold it's true stare that is just like he's got he's got he's assassin's business. eyes yeah. yeah well i don't know gene can you stare in the camera <laughs> stare in the camera real quick <laughs> give us your assassin yeah look? just give it yeah <laughs> Yeah. That guy means hey, 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 hey. That's that. Hey, that wait, 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 wait. Dicks out for Gene. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, get your dicks out for Gene. Our Gene Gene's got a stare that you're expecting at any moment should go black and white like a political ad. 
<laughs> like it's just like at, at some moment it's but going actually, to go actually, wrong. I, I got it in all in all fairness and seriousness. Gene actually um, influenced and guided the No Agenda show into the period system of nights and beyond. That was, it was so really that, that was a, that was a lot of his advice. You know, it's like holy crap, man, this guy's he's not just. You know, loaded clearly with chicks and booze and names on hotel rooms, but <laughs> so, I mean, well, and you know, you know, I mean, yeah. well, I mean, I, can I out what you do for a living? You make success. You actually people. know what he does for a living. He's a legitimate businessman. I, I, I still this. don't know what he does for a living. I don't care. Uh, He's always like, "Hey, man, I got this cool FBI hoodie." <laughs> Oh, thanks. Hey, man, I got some shredded money from the Federal Reserve. <laughs> like, 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 he's like, hey, you want a Glock from Secret Service? Jeez Louise. <laughs> oh, my God. I've been, talk I've been having all the wrong conversations with this I was man. Say, <laughs> Brian no longer knows what well, he does for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's like, you know, oh, he's a waiter at Waffle House, right? Like, that's what he told me. He can get me uh, ba bashed and smashed or smothered and <laughs> smothered covered. And covered and cumbered. <laughs> cumbered. cumbered. Fantastic. Takes all, all comers. He's here from the health department. Uh, well, hey, here's finally a good episode of the show. Yeah, yeah, finally. It's <laughs> all <laughs> coming home to roost. Hey, yeah. speaking of which, now that we've had a good episode of the show, we don't have <laughs> knights and territories and we're not selling fiefdoms, but if you would like <laughs> you to become- You guys are Patreon, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, if you want oh, to yeah. head on over to patreon.com slash I think you should, I think you guys should be doing at least 26, 2700 an episode yeah i think it's low so what's I the think. secret help us out here what do we need to do uh we, we, we don't want to rip off your knights thing no maybe we could sell uh papal positions yeah we could have a pope uh, some cardinals, cardinals. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, some stephen ministers there you go <laughs> we're gonna mix them all up we could have some rabbi i was gonna yeah no let's just Imams. Yeah, yeah moms <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, high clerics, uh, yeah. uh, and and pastafarians, <laughs> yeah, pastafarian, pastafarian high priest. Sure. Let's mm -hmm, not mm -hmm, discriminate, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everybody gets a free burkini. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Which Bonnie will we model have, for us. Yeah. By the way, I just, immediately, as soon as that was said, all I wanted was just like the, the, the beach blanket bingo, like, <laughs> it's burkini blanket bingo. <laughs> <laughs> We can have auditors from Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm All clear. Right. Oh, yes. Oh, clears is, is a billion dollars. Yeah, no, please, uh, why don't you join our cult? Please head on over to patreon.com slash night attack. Uh, trust that, uh, that lesbian and that child. Uh, <laughs> yes. and, that Brazilian uh, child exactly. and that very, very powerful <laughs> business lesbian. Well, you know what the le where the lesbian thing comes from. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, you won't get into that? Nope. Yeah, I mean, we can. No, I won't. I, I don't think you guys are talking about the same thing. Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, yeah. We're talking about my balls. He's talking about your nuts. We're talking about your nuts. Yeah. 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 Nuts out for your wife. Nuts out to keep having sex. Yeah. This is my motto. Do you buy that? Because, all right, here, let's reset it. This is something we've talked about on the show before. John C. Dvorak uh, is a good friend and called very legitimately concerned, saying, like, hey, I heard you getting a vasectomy. You know, you do it. Yeah. He didn't like that you told that on the show. Why? Yeah, because not not the story itself, because he's well known, because we talk about it on No Agenda right, all right, the time. Right. But he called you as a friend, and then you kind of like outed him that he's concerned about people. He doesn't want anyone to know that. Oh, <laughs> he's so, cold okay. blooded. He called cold blooded. Sorry, I'm yeah. gonna, yeah. You, you understand? Know what? That story was a lie. The real story is he <laughs> called to laugh at me. <laughs> yeah, and he called. And he said, "Ha ha, you're gonna look like a lesbian." And then he hung up three times. I just gonna so say he called it. back. <laughs> yeah, ha ha, <laughs> Rachel Maddow. Yeah. <laughs> all I gotta, all I gotta say is that Brian is definitely a great lesbian. So he's uh, doing. Well, hold, on. Yeah. hold on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's going on? Tacos, okay. tacos, 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 and tacos, tacos, tacos at nine. Bonnie's mm -hmm. got a new mm -hmm. hey, grin. dude. Oh, yeah. Homeboys going down like Man. Sean Connery in the Hunt for Red October. <laughs> Periscope down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, oh, this God. is a very intimate episode of Night Attack. I'm sorry, a, <laughs> Night it's Agenda. A, it's yeah. a small room. Patreon.com <laughs> slash Night Attack. If that isn't worth some money to you, I mean, show me where you went to a movie and got that kind of fucking entertainment for two tickets for 50 bucks. You bought popcorn, you didn't even get a blowjob. And that is worth money. 
quality entertainment Fair right enough. here. Uh, thank you to everybody who's doing it. By the way, we will have album tracks that are going out to uh, all the big patrons uh, this week. We are finalizing album listings. We spent all today listening to album tracks. We're going to spend tomorrow listening to album Speaking tracks. Speaking of which, real quick, we should we we under promote that one of the benefits of being a patron is you get the pre show and the post show. Where yeah. uh, some of the best parts, I'm going to say two weeks ago, best parts of the show were the pre show and the post show. You know what it is? You know how there's like a like a store that you really like. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, and you just, you know, and you like it, maybe you look in the window, but you didn't go in, you didn't go in, and then you bought the shit online or whatever. Yeah. And the one day the shop is gone. Yeah. And you think, fuck me. Could have Why done didn't I, yeah. I just support this guy? Yeah. Yeah. No. It, now there we people go. People think about that. And by the way, for everybody who's just listening to this because they are no agenda listeners and they're listening uh, to it for Adam, Adam was here for our pre show, and I'm sure you'll be hanging out here later for the post show. So it's another reason the buzz to show. get on the oh, post show. The post show, yeah. Hey, so real quick, how did you meet John C. Dvorak? How did, how did No Agenda come to be? Oh, uh, well, first I met him uh, oh, it was a long time ago. Uh, before CNET was a, a website, um, it was a TV show. <laughs> before that, an and idea. <laughs> yes, and but it was, it was very interesting because I was asked to do a pilot weekend with them out in California. It was a Halsey Minor, of course, who famously squandered all his riches off of CNET. Oh, it's a great story. John knows him. I, I met him, of course, but it's a good story. I mean, hundreds of millions and just bought stupid shit and divorced many. It's a bad story. I just had a flash and just realized that we get to do this all over again when we get John on the program. Yeah, yeah. Be good amazing. luck with that. <laughs> all right, um, we'll see. And uh, Kevin Wendell, he was the producer, and this is the guy who pretty much cobbled the Fox Television Network together. Not Fox News, but the original yeah, one, which is yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, rabbit, the Rabbit Ears yep. uh, Network is what it was called. Yeah, it's the fourth network. And it was, you know, it was pretty cool television. It was, and I was there, and um, Mark Cantor was there. If you ever met Mark Cantor, but he, you know, he's a very interesting guy in technology. Um, let's see, uh, like Mae Jemison, the astronaut, and uh, Dvorak. And, and I had never met Dvorak, but he was doing this this kind of, you know, like a McLaughlin-type show. Mm -hmm. Like, that guy's pretty good. So we talked for a little bit. And later I ran into him, um, uh, I think, at Twit. And uh, or maybe I was on Skype. and he, I, I don't know if we were in the same room. And at a certain point he says, hey, Curry, uh, what's your fucking deal? Because <laughs> he'd been reading about me in, in Dutch press. And, you know, there's a little different, you know, it's, it's a different vibe if you really look at what's going on in the press there. And he says, you know, what are you, like, people seem to hate you. You rich? What is going on? I said, you know, I think you have, people hate you too, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we should do lunch. <laughs> and we did. We had lunch, and then and we kind of hit it off. He was also looking for a gig, you know, and I was running Pod Show at the time. I was like, yeah, man, I'll, you know, totally. He, he's, he has a good eye for television, um, very good eye. And we brought him on for some tech stuff. And when I was in San Francisco, I lived in London. I'd uh, commute back and forth every mm -hmm. couple of weeks. And uh, when I was back home, we'd get on Skype. And you know, and this is 2007, uh, eight, something like that. Oh, Maybe wow, a little yeah, earlier, yeah. seven or eight. Uh, and I just read the whole Lisbon Treaty, which is supposed to be the Constitution of Europe, and there's all this fucked up shit going on. It was, and what the the press was reporting was not at all what was in the document. And I was talking to John that's about it. for the podcast medium. Is it's so we're, we're just talking yeah. about it, and I'd read something from the, the newspaper. And, you know, hey, I'm out, I'll see you in a couple of weeks or whatever. And then one day we're chatting, saying, you know, I think John said we should, we should fucking record this. I mean, yeah, we're crazy. Of course so we should record when, this. When you're recording, uh, are you thinking at that time, like, we're going to start a podcast and it's going to become a revolution? Or are you thinking, like, let's just record it and we'll figure out what to do with it later? No, it's it exactly that. We just, you know, we're talking anyway. Let's record it. What a waste of good content. You know, right. I think this is interesting to listen to. And I think John said that Mimi, his wife, really liked that. She really liked listening to, you know, to people's conversations. She's weird. Uh, it's just like, uh, like, like pick up the landline. And yeah. Like <laughs> <in> <laughs> the party line. <laughs> That's me. And that may be Mimi. I don't know. <laughs> no, she's lovely. Um, and, you know, then I think, what would we call it? And I was like, well, we have no agenda, so let's just call it no agenda. It was so, literally that easy. Uh, how much has the show shifted? Over oh my time? god, it's completely different. Right. Okay. So that. Yeah. So that so yeah. it was what and now we it is literally what? in the first I don't know fifty episodes said this is the show that has no jingles. I mean, we literally said no <laughs> jingles. The show that has no jingles, and then all of a sudden we had jingles. Well, and um, you guys follow so the very wait, so, wait, so that's how it's changed. Is the <laughs> is jingles that, just jingles? No. Well, n no, and also. It really moved more towards media deconstruction because you know you, it yeah. just writes itself. You just look. I mean, the shit that's being said on television and radio was fucking hilarious. 
There so really you just play is, that and make fun of it and say, well, here's what I think. Because I like reading legislation. I like, I like reading yeah. bills and stuff like that. Um, and it's very easy to find you know, what things are really about when the, the press is telling you well, something Well, there's also different. just a different way that you look at it once you've worked in, the, in, in media before. And, 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 and both and of us have standing in yeah, media. You yeah, know, he's exactly. He's more in, in, in publishing, but certainly also radio. Because I know radio. for me, like, I, I look at things. I used to be a newspaper reporter. Like, I look at things differently because I just understand how Dude, I was faking satellite interviews with Janet Jackson in 1983 oh that's amazing oh it was you, know, you get this tape they, they, they yeah. said you the, the, the humatic a humatic humatic yeah. humatic yeah. Humatic, yeah. humatic high band humatic everybody um, wow and then you just and I was really good at that I'd have my I'd say you know just leave it like that tort, tighten this one up a little bit and I'd just have my questions I'd ask the question and it would be perfect we even put in a little like like static oh Oh, I think we may have lost our connection. Janet, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Janet? Oh, she's back. Hi, Janet. Good. Yeah. So, uh, so Unedited. We just did it live. Just rolled it live, man. You guys also followed a very similar trajectory of what Justin and I have gone through in that uh, we're, you're very fan and community driven. Well, that's the secret to this. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's, I mean you're doing the right thing because I, mean, I tell you, you cannot monetize the network. I've tried it. Um, you're seeing you know, all these people trying to do it again. The main problem is there's no rating system that everybody agrees upon, so you're never really going to get full buy-in. You get brand advertising, but once the metrics aren't there and there's question, you're just a small little pot of money, and you can never really grow. And if you have a network, then you know it's like the top show gets you know ninety percent of everything, and all these other shows because it doesn't scale because it's only it like it, because it's only about like but, okay, so you have you have one big show and forget and, 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 and me and no, me undies forget buys about it, it, but just forget about it because yeah. they're trying. to this is, I, I try to do this. And then you, you have an advertising buy across a large swath of audiences and reach, but you still, you really can't prove it. And, you know, well, is it download or listen? I mean, I've heard this shit a million fucking times. You cannot, I don't know how many people listen to our show. I don't know. Well, I and fucking that, and don't know. That's what yeah. changed for us once we went independent and we went with Patreon. Like, we and then honestly you, and, just, But you don't care. You just exactly. want to pay your rent. There's only one just number we pay, care yes, about. That's you want to pay Patreon your rent. number. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. and that's the way it should be. And, and, but, and so but how the, quickly but do you the participation, guys figure that out? I think we inherently both knew it, have just have being frustrated by um, traditional media. Mm -hmm. um, this is what this is what public radio really should be. Not give me ten bucks and I'll give you a fucking tote bag and you know, <laughs> stick it in your ass with your <laughs> yeah. tote bag. People want to participate. Yes. They want to be in the chat. They want to send shit. They want you to play stuff. They want to be mentioned. They want to be a part. We call our listeners producers for that very reason. There are producers. They're not really our listeners. They're producers. Yeah. Uh, which by we the way actually is have brilliant. a I mean because that's it. I mean producers is a great name. We call ours harambies like you know <laughs> <laughs> This is kind of weird. We whip, our, we whip our dicks out. <laughs> this is weird. This has gotten yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, totes out for Harambe. <laughs> so at w when you guys started and started releasing, how did you? Uh, because uh, did you always live stream, or how quickly did you figure when out? You started the releasing when you started. I'm ready to release, leaving. John. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, how quickly did you start live streaming and start, you know, uh, having the, the live chat room? The so live on? streaming didn't come until I was in L.A., so I want to say that was mm, probably 2012. Okay, wow. So that's fairly recent. Yeah, that was, that was a big outsized recent. reaction. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> well, that was also when, when we decided I was going to do it full time, and John was also going to, you know, he still writes columns, but I'm going to do that full time. So and you so guys, we, we we really took quite a leap. I had I sold my airplane and everything because it took several years to get to an understandable that's step. A, understandable step. <laughs> that We've is all a gone through. It. I aspire <laughs> to say no, someday. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every <laughs> once in a while, you got to sell your you airplane. Have to sell get an airplane. serious. Come on. Tighten the belt. <laughs> this was the best lesson I, you know, for my I daughter. I swear to God, <laughs> if we do not get an entire chat room of WPR right now, <laughs> like every What's time I joke about, oh, Jesus, I, I mentioned. Right, so, there we go. Thank God. I don't uh, know. I think the chat has a pretty good idea, just, though, that we sample? need to... Uh, uh, white people rich. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, can, can, can we, can I, don't, we, I don't need to know why. I got uh, it. Uh, we do. <laughs> yeah. We do need to uh, you know, provide no, Brian tote I, bags for our listeners if they sign up. But wait, we, have, so, we absolutely yeah. do. But every day that Brian's like, anyway, so I got a side of asparagus with my steak. Everyone's like, white people rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if somebody's literally mentioning, I had to sell my plane. Hey, so Come on. you got to play. You got to play the song for me, apparently. Yeah. Nice. Oh wait, do we have the song? Okay, so, oh, geez, there, there it is. is. There yeah. it is. Brian is balling. No, they don't care how much it is because he don't care what the price is, right? 
living in Texas, got three daughters, white people rich, white people rich, buy an Xbox One the day it comes out, Woo! white people rich, white people rich, throw your hands up <laughs> if you have an accountant, white people rich, fuckers. white people rich, like if you it. have life insurance and you're hooked on the premium, the white no people agenda. rich, <laughs> white people rich, so, uh, this motherfucker right over here. This is what I built song. my career on. Yeah, 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 no, this is, yeah. Yeah. I is, about is uh, that. So, they started freestyling on the show. Bryce, as a fan, <laughs> puts that together as a song. It's someone else takes every clip of me on the internet ever handling right, money and, it and makes it into a nice, video. Nice. Then somebody starts remixing the goddamn video. Nice. And then uh, and then Bryce shows up at South by Southwest saying, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, saying, <laughs> <laughs> Bryce shows up at South by Southwest <laughs> saying like, hey, I'm thinking of moving to Austin. And I'm like, you're hired. Just yes, show up. Yeah. That <laughs> might be, okay, that's close enough. It's pretty it's close. close. <laughs> pretty close. Close enough. Uh, but uh, the only thing I left out was the part when uh, uh, Bryce's jaw hit the floor when my 10-year-old uh, <laughs> daughter I... at the time started singing the White, White People, People Rich, Rich song in front of him. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Not Excellent. knowing who Excellent. I was. Not knowing that he was the one yeah. who made it. Corrupting uh, my uh, By the way, Waffle Lava goes in the chat room asks, uh, so uh, w what kind of plane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what kind of plane was what it? What kind of plane did you sell? A 182RG. Uh, Cessna 182 retractable. Can we, let me see that. I, I, C S S N A. Hey, put R G. It has to be R G. Yeah. 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 It's none RG. of this fucking no R G shit. Yeah. R G retractable. <laughs> it's a very different airplane. Is this it? Oh no. Mm -hmm. No. That's a. Yeah, it flies like that. Yeah. Like wow. That. Yeah. 180 knots was pretty. What? Uh, fast. How often did you get to fly? Well, when I lived in London, it was fantastic because just fly over to Amsterdam would be a lot better than going to Gatwick and getting an easy jet. And I had a real destination. Man, and, I can relate. And, and I tell you, I was a bad. We've all been there. <laughs> you want to get from London right, to Amsterdam, you wanna, you wanna, but you, you don't want to go to Gatwick. There's gotta be a better way. White people rich. White people rich. White people rich. Sorry, you were saying. If you ever die, I want your place. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, so so you, uh, um, I, I, love I, that. I, I, I assume love flying. you, yeah, you get your pilot's license mm -hmm. and and you're what you're that renting. That's a big achievement. I didn't graduate college or anything, so I decided I, I can do this. I can really get my pilot, and I get helicopter license first, and then I did, got helicopter is supposed to be the harder one, right? Yeah, but I was interested. Mm -hmm. I, I, at the time, I actually owned a helicopter company. I was really rich. No, I was. I was like. I was so white was back like, in those days. No, no. It was I was amazing. fucking. I was like transparent. I was so fucking rich. <laughs> <laughs> no longer. <laughs> you know how you, you know how you no longer get rich. Start a helicopter company. <laughs> good, very good fucking start. So wait, so you were well, beautiful. These are these were Augusta um, six passenger twin gigantic jet, one pilot IFR. I mean, yeah, really and nice. And you were like renting them to I, people. Well, I had an uh, air operator certificate, and I actually built a heliport, and really got a lot of shit going. Um, and where the, is this? Amsterdam. This is in Amsterdam. Okay. And then uh, nine eleven happened. What, what it, is that? I'm not familiar. <laughs> <laughs> it, was really, it was really building seven. <laughs> that was <laughs> of interest. <laughs> <laughs> the show just collapsed like Hillary really, Clinton in building really, seven. <laughs> really. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> All right. So... Uh, so anyway, so so obviously first 9/11 happened. Then people were not into flying at all. Sure, sure. So this was very tough for the marketing. Sure. And um, then, uh, well, my partner turned out to be not his name wasn't his real name, and he oh, ran dude. off, and he had no more money, and uh, he was wanted by the Scotland Yard for. So uh, we, uh, we, grand theft auto and all kinds of. We told a story about somebody who larceny. defrauded us, and they're like, "How do you get defrauded?" I'm like, uh, "What was it's, the scam?" I'm like, the he was scam my friend. Is... He was my friend for eight years. Exactly. Eight it's fucking called years. The, the the scam of befriending someone yeah. for three years yeah. and building up trust and then yeah. violating. And he that he, trust. he had actually sold a, an internet company to France Telecom, and so you know I, I was kind of out of my first company at the same time, so we were hanging out. And anyway, I also built a, a, a data center. I was ready. We had everything good to go. The you know. It was called the Data Barn. It was fucking great. On the Am Six, everything was anyway. So, so, so this so is, got this is the helicopter. So, company, no, right? all, well, we had a couple of companies. Gotcha. So okay, that okay. had to go away because he was broke and gone. And I was like, oh fuck, I'll try and keep the helicopter company going because I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. um, 
And uh, but I had to scale down to one pilot. <laughs> white, white people, people rich. rich. White, white people, people rich. We've all been there. <laughs> You've got too many pilots. And uh, just not and out. so I so I had new marketing and I had this um, uh, a female uh, ex military pilot. She looked fucking hot. And I had you know my wife and made like hot jumpsuits for her. And then we had our customer service girl and she also looked maybe looked rotor jet. Maybe there's a picture of rotor jet. Uh, pilots, um, <laughs> probably people shitting on you in the chat room. <laughs> no, only one pilot. Come on, <laughs> what a clown show! <laughs> and anyway, so she developed a fear of flying. <laughs> is, that, is that a thing that can happen? Yes, and it happens. It's a, it's, it's a, it, you know, I, of course, I didn't, you know, I'm going to fire Let's go to psychologist and what the fuck is going I mean, it was bad. Yeah. And she was, a, like, she flew in uh, Apaches. And so she's flying my fucking well, helicopter and, and, and she's got uh, uh, fear uh, of flying. Yeah, you know what? To pull it's, back- it has to do with certain age, particularly with women. It has to do with um, if they don't have children and there's some se- other sexuality stuff in there. Uh, it, I'm, yeah. She told me all this. I'm like, well, that what? blows. Man, I wish you could see kids, the joy on Jean's face right now. By yeah. the way, yeah. before they have kids, before uh, they have kids, there is there is just a a a, a, a very a very distinctive laugh like like coming into my yeah. right ear right now. It's just like I'm not slurring. <laughs> Maybe I need a little more liquid. Uh, so uh, 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 no, I totally believe that because I had never had anxiety attacks that. ever until uh, until you know we got to the point where you know the TV production and the the, the difficulties that come with all that stuff. Uh, that stuff can strike, and there's no logicking and your way out of it. Flying a helicopter, yeah, is not yeah. A good idea. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A, yeah. I think she still has not flown to this day. Wow. Yeah. Aww. So anyway, wait, so, oh, wait, wait, so wait. I I looked up and went like, okay, God, I get it. Yeah. But I still want to learn how to fly because I like it. So yeah. Uh, so wait, you were running all these companies and had not learned yourself. No. No. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Pause. Wow. Have you come back in contact in any way with the guy who ran off? He's on dead. You? He, he died. Yeah, That's in like Colombia. So there's no chance we can get him on the show right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> then who's calling right <laughs> now? Uh, uh, <laughs> Hello, no, caller? So, <laughs> call you From here. Colombia. Hello. Uh, no, Cambodia. Oh, by the way, so so you just found out he was dead. There, there was no reconnection or anything no, like never. past that? No, never. Never. Uh, yeah. no, I, I was pretty pissed off. Because I, I would imagine when, when something like that happens, like... Uh, you know, where even is your mind when you find out that he's dead? I, I actually, I got sick. You know, I, I, I went to our... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a hilarious story. No, i <laughs> So we, were, we had a nice place in Amsterdam, and then I went to the, our castle in Belgium. <laughs> As one does. Go, go, so go. So drafty. Just Those have, castles, just have right? the music. Just have the music ready to go at any moment. <laughs> So anyway, you're in your castle in Belgium. That's where you dwell. That's where the, heli- the yeah. helipad. I had the, the helipad. God, Adam, yeah. you have no idea how happy exactly. I am that you're here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, you, it's like when the show, when the sun outshines the moon. It's like <laughs> all the attention. I think. I think. You, you, yeah, you're gonna go to three grand in Patreon. This is I a agree. Good one. We should. It's a good one. We'll still be poor. Who is this? The chat room. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Papa Bouvet, only one castle? (laughs) (laughs) I just love, I love that this chat, this chat is so amazing because it doesn't matter where you go, to north, to south. For everyone in the family. Oh, no, no. By the way, buy buy all your iPhones right now. (laughs) I'm buying an Apple Watch. Like, while while the cloud covers high, I'm buying a new Apple Watch. I'm buying a new iPhone. I'm buying, Brian's buying a MacBook. Uh, We're all buying a lot of things. So anyway, about your castle. (laughs) Only one, though. One castle. Timeshare. Come on. He's not ostentatious. Uh. (laughs) So, you went to White Castle. Yeah, so. White Castle. White Castle. It was kind of like March, so it was, you know, it was cold and misty. And you know, first the tapestries were well, inspected. First, I, first I was, I was, I was physically ill because it, it was a big, a big jolt, and um, and I got bladder infection. I mean, and, and my wife and daughter they didn't come down to visit me. I'm like, fuck him, you know, let him go sit there and figure it out. That's it was bad. Wow. Um, but then I, I had this like whole rocky thing. 
you know, and then I'd get up in the morning. You'd I'd, punch and, me. And, and, yeah, well. <laughs> and you eat yeah. raw eggs. Da, 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 yeah. and, I'd, and I'd run, I'd run <laughs> through the castle grounds. <laughs> <laughs> through the maze, through the maze. <laughs> Best decision we've ever had, having this man on the show. <laughs> so you'd run the castle grounds. You have to understand the funny. You would you, you have your, your your daily constitution. <laughs> I'm snotting myself. It's fine. It's good. We could you could pay somebody I'm, to wipe I'm that off for you. I'm, I'm, I'm really crying. Thank you, Bonnie. I'm crying. You guys if, you, crying. if you just pulled out two hundred dollar bills and wiped your nose, it would be the best podcast ever. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's a nice. Ca- that's a nice hanky. Is that cashmere? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Bryce is getting gully. <laughs> Dude, he wrote the song on it, man. He did. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. So you decide to fly a helicopter. <laughs> right. Um, and, you know, uh, there's a lot of guys who learn, who want to learn how to fly, and they learn how to fly, but they never get their license because it takes them actual fucking work. And right. It's, it's annoying. It's like two weeks of real studying, and then the test is a little, a little intimidating. The written test, the flying test is pretty easy. I mean, I did my test up in uh, um, uh, Portland, and, uh, you know, it's like, it's a friendly inspector, you know, it's like, hey, how you doing? We're all buddies, and go fly around. It's like, hey, man, take it on to 500 feet. There's a girl there who is, sometimes she's, she's sunning, uh, she's out there topless. Does it go to, and that's my, my test. Yeah. Right. I'm literally flying yeah. 500 feet to look at chicks. When we got- With the, uh, <laughs> with the, ins- with the examiner. <laughs> when we got our motorcycle <laughs> license, no. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not even on the radar. Are you Sorry. Me? Not, uh, not on the same level. But when we got our motorcycle license, they would do this thing where they would be like, let's practice for the test. And they were like, well, if this was the test, you would need to put your foot down or whatever. Oh, right, right, and then right, they get right, to the right, end right. and they're like, psych, you all passed the test. That's great. Yeah. 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 So like, like that was the test. It's kind of like a license <laughs> to learn, really. Um, but of course, until you have a, you know, a fully qualified flight instructor who signs off on you, right. you're not going to get insurance. So you're not going to have your own plane, even if if you have a, a license, so there's a lot more work to be done. After how how that. many flight hours have you logged, and and how uh, how in your schedule did you make flying a regular part of things? Was it always just for grins or or for travel? Or? Always for travel. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I have 2,700 hours. Wow. Um, probably now about even on fixed wing and rotary. I even flew a, Ch- a Chinook in uh, Iraq. That was pretty fucking badass. Uh, Jeez. That's well. that's uh, Iraq, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you can't let that slip by. Uh, tell me, uh, how did that yeah. happen? Maybe you'll have to have me back for that. Oh, sure. White people brave. <laughs> <laughs> White people brave. <laughs> American patriots. American patriots. Well, this is a radio story, so it's okay. So, yeah. uh, 2003, I was a friend of mine was uh, contracted to do uh, the morning show. Um, actually, funny enough, on the station that we worked at together back in the 80s, which you know, had new owners, but it was still the same brand. And he had to go into rehab, so I said, yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll do the show for a couple months, and it turned out to be a year. He's back now, and everything's good, so real right. happy. Um, and, you know, so it was a morning show. And first of all, oh, I had a motorcycle <laughs> I had a motorcycle accident, a motocross uh, event, so I had really fucked up my insides, and I didn't want medication, so I just smoked weed and, like, really helped. I mean, I couldn't shit straight for a year. It was really bad. Um, so I did this morning show and had my guy would drive me, but I'd be getting high, you know, at 3.30 in the morning on the way to the show. Sure. And so we're doing the show. And it was a Wait, great where's, show. It, where is this? It, that was in Amsterdam. But in I was Amsterdam, living in Belgium. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and I, it was a pretty good morning show, you know, at least I thought so. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, I and, thought it was hilarious. And, right. <laughs> and there was this news report about a, a Dutch Marine who were in Iraq, uh, along with the coalition, and he had uh, uh, shot a civilian accidentally or whatever, doesn't Boy. matter, but they wanted to try him in civilian court. And we're just reading this news item like, hey, man, that's bullshit. So in America, we support our troops, you know, and uh, we have the uh, USO, and we get, like, we get, like, cool people like Bob Hope, and, you know, yeah. we should go over to those guys right now. We should bring strippers and, you know, have some fucking fun. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, good idea. And after the show, the Ministry of Defense had called, and they said, no, hey, to the, by the no way. to the strippers, but yeah, we'd like you to do that. Oh, that's wonderful! So we broadcast the show live for an entire week, and every day we got to go somewhere. And then one time was to Basra, which uh, that, that was a pretty hot zone at the time. 
and the heli detachment uh, of the Dutch Marines was there, and they they knew that I had a license and said, "All right, man, we'll fly you guys back, but you fucking fly." Oh, that's great. So so it's like you were already moving. The controls were there. They knew that you knew what you were doing. Yes. And then they, oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. So uh, was this through like the uh, the MWR program? This is actually a military. thing? It was or? the first time the Dutch uh, uh, military had ever done something like that. Got it. So Got they, it. they didn't have any program of like troop morale. No, or, no, yeah. none at all. And what was actually even more fun, well, for t- to this day, I still have, because uh, we interview Marines during the show and stuff, yeah. talk about what's going on, a- and parents, uh, parents still come, <laughs> parents still come they up to me. They just don't understand. No, I get emotional. <laughs> no, I, 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 I get, em- I get emotional about it. Yeah, okay. No, parents yeah. come up to me and say, you know, thank you, that uh, you really built a bridge with my child while he was there, and yeah. I was very worried, and, you know, and that, it was, that was incredibly cool. Uh, on the other hand, since we had the satellite uh, uh, bi-directional, I had brought one of my transmitters, a 100-watt transmitter. Believe it or not, I still had one. And we put it there, and we put the radio station on and broadcast it to the whole Samawa province. You know, the, there was the only radio station was a... Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, sure. And so yeah. we were just blasting this out. But you saw... Those parents. But you saw people, understand. you saw you know, Marines sitting in a circle around the radio. Man. Just listening to the radio. Because, you know, they'd, they'd heard all their CDs, they'd seen all the DVDs, and they were just listening to, they're like, oh, man, just to hear Dutch traffic reports. That's the... Maybe uh, a whole different, whole different idea of what it is to be there. I, I, I think one thing that Justin and I are both acutely aware of mm-hmm. is that, uh, you know, we exist by the grace of some cosmic misunderstanding that allows us to make a living... Uh, doing horseshit on on you know trying to make each other laugh and hopefully making other people laugh and there's those brief moments. Uh, one of the things I have I'll show it before you head out is um, I have a, a little drawing made by a kid in uh, at a military base in Italy uh, because for the MWR program they had me go to like uh, you know uh, I don't know eight different uh, stations and it's like uh, uh, you 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 say sure I'll do my silly magic act at it whatever who cares. <clears throat> And then all the parents and the kids file in and you do your, you know, you escape from your street jacket and you say your jokes or whatever. And then there's that moment where there's a where you realize how profound it matters to them. Mm-hmm. That you, oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. Like, it doesn't matter what your thing is, yeah. if you're a juggler, if you're a magician, if you're a DJ or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's like it profoundly matters to them. Mm-hmm. And then it's and then I'll, I don't know. They're, they're, I, I understand why you would get choked up in that moment, because that's that's absolutely WMR. Is that is it like a casual uh, encounters category? <laughs> on w- a, a morale, welfare, <laughs> oh, okay. or other. It's like men, is, women, the reptile. Part, the <laughs> weird <laughs> part <laughs> is, is because it's not you, USO is a private organization organization that works with the military right. okay. mwr is the military which meant they made me a temporary military id mm-hmm. and they gave me mission orders yeah and it was like That's mission cool. statement yeah, yeah. 1400 report to the gym yeah. 1430 perform magic show and this is mission accomplished at the bottom it was extraordinary there's a, there's a 30 minute documentary that you can find on youtube it's called um uh operation iraqi sunrise uh-huh and um, it, you know, you can see the thirty minutes of that whole experience that I had. Oh, we, wonderful! We, yeah, we filmed it and just on our camcorders and shit, and then we, um, uh, you know, just cut it together and put some music to it. A lot of what? All right, random question. <laughs> there it is, Operation Iraqi Sunrise. There yeah, no, yeah, we're it's trying fast. to, to it's get fast. it. Uh... Well, I, you're like starting at the end. What the fuck is that? Go back to yeah, the you're, beginning. You're ruining it. Yeah, you're ruin- Rosebud's I mean, a sled. Oh, I'm you know, sorry. Do we want to watch this whole else? 20 minutes? Okay. Look at it now, man. <laughs> Just crank up the sound, bro. There you go. Dude, that's amazing footage. What an experience. Tussen 16 en 20 februari 2004. Do you speak Dutch? Yeah, fluently. Right on. All right, someone just texted me to ask you about fencing. I thought I thought you were... Really? Yeah. Is that a is that a is that a thing? I was pretty good as a kid. Are I was you a, a fencer. Are you, are you a fencer? Not anymore. But you yeah, could sell when any I was, stolen good you mentioned. When I was, yeah. <laughs> it was eleven or twelve. I was. Uh, I came in. I think I was like junior champion, national champion. So this is the same time that you are are are, are pirate radioing and, and and injecting L- pornography a little, into just, the just neighborhoods. Before, no, because I'm twelve. So just I was, you know, still. Eventually, the pornography took over the fencing. <laughs> All of a sudden, he started whipping around a different sword. Like, exactly. What the fuck? What the fuck? 
so was that, yeah. that was just something that happened when you were when you were a kid. Uh, yeah, it was like they came to school to demonstrate, you know, and like and, and of course anyone who didn't get to to do the demo, you're like, oh fuck, I'll take your free lesson. You went there and like, yeah, it's pretty cool, and it's it's a pretty cool sport. And I'm not very athletic or coordinated. Um, but you can, yeah, you can. I would you imagine can do that's okay. the same skill set for flying a helicopter or whatever is is precise which responses, is, which and... is the same um, skill as ballet, actually. So ballet, fencing, uh, helicopter, it's all very similar. Did, did, were you always comfortable talking on a microphone, or was that was there any aspect of that that you had to build up a rhythm, a set of um, uh, no, routines I can, to I can do? Rem- I can remember the first time I heard myself on tape, and I think I was five, and I wound up at six years old buying this little tape recorder from the kid who did that for me and it was some jacked up thing and the batteries if they fell out then it would never work again i had to call him and have him fix it and i can't remember what i paid for it or trade or but you know i and i was i was always fascinated by reel to reels and everything yeah so very early on i was uh, i was recording stuff doing echo loops so but but i guess my question is um yeah. Uh, for me, as a live stage performer, uh, it, it began on the street, and there were ten people there, and I and I saw ten pairs of eyes, and I knew where they were looking at all times, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every time I would ever do a TV appearance or a radio thing, super intimidated because, as far as I was concerned, the whole world was on the other side of this microphone. Uh, eventually, we got to a place in podcasting where we knew for a fact nobody was listening, <laughs> and it emboldened me <laughs> to 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 speak candidly. Mm. Uh, did you ever feel that? Were you ever intimidated by your reach? No. Or oh, okay, Never. so so you were always it's always in the room. You do your thing, and whatever goes out there goes out. Yeah, which I enjoy. I mean, television kind of happened by accident. Really, was not looking for that at all. Um, but I, I remember when I was John Holden, the the black DJ on the Harley. Sure. Uh, some kids, and I was like a re- considered a real loser at school, like super fucking loser, loser, and, and did fucking anybody loser? Look, they pissed in the teacher's coffee pot and blamed me. Wait, you? That, 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 was, that, guy. that, was, that guy. Yeah, I was that wow. guy. I was that guy. Because I don't know why a thirty five year old black man belongs in your school at all. Why? Why, why is he even there pissing yeah. in coffee pots? I know. Put him back on his Harley and get him the hell out of here. This is inappropriate. <laughs> Uh, uh, and not so, long after that, someone had figured out that that was me, and then I was very cool all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, so you uh, you had the real life that's how it works. You, that's you had the real life Spider Man experience. You a. were Peter yeah. Parker during yeah. the day and Spider Man at night. And that's I still, I can, and right now, I am Peter Parker. No one, no one recognizes me. You were talking about the other day about being recognized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get used to it, motherfucker, oh, and start geez. to embrace it and live with it. Otherwise, get out. Yeah. You got no. You got to embrace it. And by that, he means get out of life. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, man. It's one of those things that you don't realize that it means best behavior all the time, everywhere. Every comment, every forum, every personal interaction, every, you know, because because you have what you think is a totally anonymous uh, interaction. Uh, you know, like, oh, hey, like, give me 20 condoms. Now, here's uh, a diff- here's big a titty difference. Horns, nah, and nah, here's a difference. No, and no, he's no. like, I enjoy your show. No. And you're like, fuck. See, the difference is. I was always dependent upon someone else who could fire me. If I said something inappropriate or did something that offended someone and word got back, mm-hmm. um, it's not like that for you. No, correct. So it's, it's, you, but, so you don't have to times fear. Sometimes it's fear. Sometimes more than others. You don't like, have to fear bosses. termination. Uh, yeah, no, I, I've always been, uh, ever since, I, last time I had a real job was May of 99. You know what this is? Yeah. No, no, no. This no, is a no, white no. people rich problem. This shit, man. This is a white people rich Oh, it's famous. No, 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 not working. Nobody's buying it. It's so jarring. I don't know. Oh. All right. You know, all of a sudden, it's like, I have to be on my best <laughs> behavior. Okay. Bonnie. <laughs> Diamond time <laughs> is where we get to shout out Diamond. your projects Diamond. in the Diamond <laughs> Club <laughs> community. <laughs> Head on over to diamondclub.reddit.com. The top three uh, posts on the sticky post that says weekly Diamond Time submissions. We'll shout out right here live on the show. Uh, Justin, why don't you take the first one here? Uh, sure. If Bryce can actually scroll down here, here we go. I will read it. Uh, the Jen says, right? Hello, Diamond Club. I am one of the three awesome females that started a podcast called Geek Grills. We discuss geeky things, comic books, video games, live sex, you know, nerd stuff. Our most recent episode featuring the one and only Willie Dills Gregory, and we are uh, only 16 episodes in. We can't wait to get more feedback and continue to share our opinions and good times with more friends. So what do you say? You go ahead and check them out. Geekgrills.com, also on iTunes, Stitcher, etc. And if you like it, then feel free to support, review, and share. <laughs> uh, right on. Yeah, That's Geek Grills. All right, uh, what else we got there, Bryce? Uh, give me one sec. We've also got this from MJ Audio. 
N J M- MJ Audio. You got to scroll up a little bit. Yeah, there we I'm go. To... There we go. MJ Audio says, salutations, Diamond Club, along with two of my very good friends. We host a podcast called Vocabularian. It's a show dedicated to playing with words, which mostly means we make a humorously awful wreck of the English language and puns. If this sounds like a good time to you, you can find us on iTunes, Google Play, and at bit.ly slash vocabularian, a.k.a. yellow420.com slash word swag. Because, <laughs> by the way, the sheriff of Diamond Time, California Carl, who makes sure all the links come in the way that they should, says... Vocabularian is a hard word to spell. <laughs> yeah, I love that he was on the fence. He was like, mm, I don't know. Vocabularian is a hard <laughs> word. How about Let's YOLO 420 slash word swag? And finally, Drum Dude Nathaniel. Greetings, Diamond Club. I work for a nonprofit youth percussion ensemble based outside of St. Louis. Freedom Percussion aims to provide activities that enhance personal growth and development through excellence in education, entertainment, and competition. Those who perform with freedom get the opportunity to excel musically, grow mentally, and create lasting relationships with their peers. We are currently competing in a contest to win a new floor to perform on. This would save us thousands of dollars and is only a couple of clicks. You can go to bit.ly slash freedom tarp. Yeah, Freedom Tarp. Then scroll down to Freedom Percussion and vote. If you're feeling really sympathetic to the arts and want to donate to us to help us purchase new equipment, you can head to freedompercussion.org and click donate. We are 100% funded by donations, and our staff doesn't receive a penny for their time. Hey, man, I got a quick plug of my own I would like to throw in there. <clears throat> well, please, go ahead. This is a big, big week. Some of you guys have been enjoying. Everyone's asking when there's going to be a season two of Hacking the System. We haven't gotten the phone call yet, but we're not waiting. So we did The Modern Rogue, <laughs> and we've got, what, nine months of episode, eight months of episodes. Super, super happy with how it's going. It's really, really good. Um we're moving it to its own channel. It's not going to be part of the Scam School channel anymore. It's going to be its own channel. To be honest, I think this thing has the potential to blow up and be even bigger than Scam School. But I need you guys right now to head on over to bit.ly slash modern rogue channel and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you're already subscribed, there's one more thing you can do. This Friday, I'll be doing an AMA and ask me anything on Reddit. Please participate. 10 a.m. Central Time in uh, at reddit.com slash I am or slash r slash I am a I am a uh, Brian Rush should ask me anything just participate let's make that a real party that gets popular on the front page we'll get a lot of uh, uh, people interested in the modern rogue and Bonnie looks like she has something to offer oh yeah anyways that'd be great I was queuing up for next are you finished yeah I'm done yeah you're on I'm oh wait step you had something out. to remember you got something I to plug something to say well, plug. then go ahead. I'm going to, for the first time, be on somebody else's podcast tomorrow oh night. Oh, my God. Are you? Yeah. Just cheating. <laughs> I am. I'm stepping out we to have an ritual. Open relationship when it comes yeah. to podcasting. podcasting. Mm-hmm. I'm going to uh, Ritual Miseries podcast. It's on Diamond Club. I, tomorrow night. I don't really know how all this stuff Ritual works, Misery <laughs> podcast. No. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a network? Is this the Diamond Club well, podcast I, network? Technically, we're not a network. Uh, what does it say at the on DiamondClub.tv? What I think it, it says a community-driven network of independent podcasts or something like that. Basically, we serve at the pleasure of this insane demon hordes of the internet that call themselves Diamond Club. They're absolutely yeah. wonderful. Yeah. I mean, they built the site. They, they run the, the site. site. Oh, okay, they decide yeah. who's on what. Oh, excellent. Uh, uh, excellent. We, we serve at their excellent. pleasure. Oh, and, I like that. That. Yeah. Bonnie. <laughs> Do you have allergies? Did I understand this? Oh, my God. Who I mean, told you I that? Have, no, <laughs> I have horrible al- allergies. Yeah. What's yours? Uh, well, we have three children with food allergies. So, oh, okay. Yeah, have, and then like all the other allergies. Is, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we got. You gonna bust it out for? I, 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 well, you know, you know, that, oh, no. <laughs> he knows, he knows about the allergies. You know, the you know of course, yeah, yeah, that that Bonnie yeah. is uh, uh, a, a musical artist. I know, uh, I know. I, 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 know. I, I have heard her musical style. Oh, oh my god! Yes, I have. I have. So I'm very curious. impressed. Yeah, do you have a sample, Bryce, that you can bust out? Uh, so MC Allergy, of course, is Bonnie's alter ego, mm-hmm. where she brings the punk rock attitude uh, to stuff it in the face of Big Allergy, who love. Hey, I'm I surprised you haven't chimed something. in. You haven't what? chimed in on the whole EpiPen thing. Uh, Didn't we have a whole thing about it? A couple yeah, yeah. I think, I think we, we had, had a whole segment on that. Yeah. No, so yeah. 2015. I don't know. Oh, sorry, I, was, sorry, sorry. I was coming up. I'm, like, I'm, in, I'm in a track. All right, here we go. This yeah. is MC Allergy. Yeah. Oh, geez. No, this is not the best one. That's fine. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, 
This is terrible. Yeah. 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 the worst MC one. MC Allergy. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have a single that you want to plug? <laughs> Drop it. <laughs> I'm waiting for the beat. <laughs> oh, Here we go. Yeah. All right, go. This Damn. is our... I gotta tell you. Yeah. This, this is, this is, that's the dope rhyme I heard, yo. <laughs> Put that on the album, Mark. <laughs> Adam Curry, Curry says, says... That's the dope rhyme I heard, <laughs> comma, yo. <laughs> this is our shared asset between the yeah, No I Agenda have, community can I, can and I thank yeah. you. Can I thank you? Oh, sure. For, for, for what? Things, yeah. yeah. Things. All right. Go ahead, plugs. Go ahead. First of all, thank you for introducing me to the world of virtual reality. Oh my the God! First, the first good experience we were I've like ever had. Kids, it was amazing. Yeah. I and for the record, well, it's, wait, wait, it's the it's the Valve. Uh, the, Va- the Vive. The H the Vive. Vive. Yeah. Uh, Vive. Uh, Valve. I mean, is, I know shit cup- about this. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, I'm saving my pennies for this. Well, it was that's some nice shit. I I we might have to. To lease a few weekends at the castle to, to finance <laughs> a vibe. Uh, seeing your reaction. I totally want to do that high. Was so, oh, <laughs> I just totally want to do that high. Oh, well, oh. set it up. Great. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Don't amazing. worry. Uh, sorry, but you were saying uh, uh, thank you. Uh, that was very kind. Um, so, on no agenda, um, we're, you know, we're very free to do everything we want. Uh, I, I'm engineering the show, so it's it's very nice just not have to worry about a fucking thing and just come on a show. And this is the first show where you've actually allowed me to be completely myself. I know if friends of mine are watching, they're going, "This Adam, that is actually the Adam we know." Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, and and uh, I used to live switch uh, NSFW and BB Live yep. show, and then once we did Night Attack and Bryce started producing, that was that was a weird transition mm-hmm. to make. But there is so much, th- there is a bit of freedom. The character changes, but all of a sudden, when my only job is to be thinking about what's funny, a lot and not easier. Thinking about you mm-hmm. know keeping everything alive, it's yeah. a lot more fun. Well, now we also we, you know we have a you know a certain type of show and a certain type of content. So you know if we're funny, then it's just really lucky. But you know, we re- I really wish we could, we were you know winning under comedy category because I really want to be funny. Well, yeah. Well, but, first of all, but yeah, I have tonight not, was any indication. I have not You've got cr- some I, natural talent there. I have not there. cried laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually cry for achievement. I'm a real. I'm a, sure, I got yeah. to, no, no, I got to say, with I, pride. I'm a no. I'm a really weird crier. You know, like sad <laughs> shit. He's, he's no. crying about how he cries. Listen, sad <laughs> shit. No, yeah. All that, n- nothing. You know, nothing. Dead people, guts coming out, dog dead. Nothing. If I watch The Voice, or if I watch America's Got Talent, and some kid, and I know how it works, and I was fucking yeah, bogus. Sure. I was, I saw, I was dancing with the stars. I saw, you know, a rich NFL player succeed with his first dance. I'm like crying for the rich NFL guy. Yeah. I mean, I've, 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 I, I'm very, uh, I'm very, I don't know what that is. That, uh, that, that developed I've, that in the past couple of years. It's called empathy. That's the word. Empathy. Yeah. Well, no, but only yeah. specific right, empathy. A- any any empathy that also requires a line producer to bring <laughs> to uh, Adam apparently is really what tickles his sweet spot. I think it's just to admit my girlfriend, really. Uh, well, dude, that'll yeah. definitely happen because I've noticed She's that everything really cha- changes. I've really changed. How so, long? How long has that been? Uh, sixteen months. Oh, all right. So, so new. So, so yeah. relatively new. Well, right? when you have that new relationship, and weirdly for me, it's been with my daughters. It's like you mm-hmm. know, you have a daughter, and it's like a it's a food processor piece of mush, yeah. and then at some point, it becomes a person, and you fall in love with that person, and you realize, I don't know, there's something about that. Like now, there's a psychological backdoor. I don't care how cheesy the production, how cheesy the movie is, there are a few buttons you can press, yeah. and just instant water works. Yeah, maybe that's a part of it. Yeah. 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 So you have boys and girls? Uh, all yep. girls. All girls. girls. All ladies. Yeah. Man, I, 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 I don't go compete. You know what they no. say is, uh, you know, boys break your shit and girls shit in your heart. <laughs> oh, jeez. <Aww. laughs> yeah. That's that. Oh, sounds right. He, sounds has, right. He, he actually has that inscribed into his castle in Belgium. <laughs> <That's- laughs> I have, I have a, a wall of bricks. A wall of bricks that uh, <laughs> that saddles it up. A wall of bricks. It's a good idea. So All right. to do that. As we, weird. We finance something that way. As weird as it is to say this, there's some part of our community who's hearing you for the first time. Yeah. Would you like oh, to no. give plugs? Where, where, where can people get more of your lovely talents? <laughs> wow. That yeah, was like buy a, a helicopter. That was like a, that was like a really That's bad Jimmy one. Kimmel Sorry, setup for yeah. the plug. Yeah. Uh, NoAgendashow.com. That's it. That's, that's the that's one. And how, for, for people who have never heard No Agenda, people who only listen to this show, how would you describe No Agenda? Better than this show. Yes! <laughs> Just <laughs> that simple. Just Setting that, that simple. bar low. Although, although this particular episode... <laughs> uh, we're elevated. looking good. Elevated. We're looking good, huh? Yeah. No, but I, I like I like what you're doing. This is, this is very enjoyable. Right on, man. Yeah. Well, dude, it was a real pleasure. Is it over here. now? 
I well, I think we're done. Oh. Oh. They're going to wrap up the real show. Like, we'll we we have like all this emotional stuff. We got to go out with you know Harambe dicks out gonna, something. Gonna I mean, play the lullaby. Oh, I think. Yeah. I think we'll, we'll this mean we're over. Yeah, we'll hang around for the post show. Yeah, post show goes on. Post show goes on. Post show goes on. All right. But yeah, because my driver doesn't pick me up until eleven. <laughs> so and that's just to drive him to the Halifax. Because <laughs> <laughs> now he's, he's high enough to get it out. Hi, everybody. To Adam Curry. No agenda so show.com. Oh, Thursdays no, live no, no, no. at 11 Justin, in Austin, Texas. Thank you for flying out oh, for this hey, special yeah, event, you, man. man. Nice. It was amazing. Thank you. Bonnie. Do me a favor, beautiful people. Die in a fire. Know, See you next Tuesday. Adios, mofos. Oh. Justin Robert Young Every time you go I get so sad That I wanna Drink a warm glass Of Drano Night attack Night attack Night attack Night attack Night attack Night attack, night attack, night attack, I love you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>